This video is created by Nihar Dash from YouTube. This video is created by Nihar Dash from YouTube. Vacuum tube a vacuum tube, electron tube 1 2 3 valve, British usage, or tube, North America, 4 is a device that controls electric current flow in a high vacuum between electrodes to which an electric potential difference has been applied. Later thermionic vacuum tubes, mostly miniature style, some with top cap connections for higher voltages the type known as a thermionic tube or thermionic valve uses the phenomenon of thermionic emission of electrons from a hot cathode and is used for a number of fundamental electronic functions such as signal amplification and current rectification. Non-thermionic types, such as a vacuum phototube however, achieve electron emission through the photoelectric effect and are used for such purposes as the detection of light intensities. In both types, the electrons are accelerated from the cathode to the anode by the electric field in the tube. The simplest vacuum tube, the diode, invented in 1904 by John Ambrose Fleming, contains only a heated electron emitting cathode and an anode. Electrons can only flow in one direction through the device, from the cathode to the anode. Adding one or more control grids within the tube allows the current between the cathode and a node to be controlled by the voltage on the grids. Five these devices became a key component of electronic circuits for the first half of the 20th century. They were crucial to the development of radio, television, radar, sound recording and reproduction, long distance telephone networks, and analog and early digital computers. Although some applications had used earlier technologies such as the spark gap transmitter for radio or mechanical computers for computing, it was the invention of the thermionic vacuum tube that made these technologies widespread and practical, and created the discipline of electronics. Six in the 1940s, the invention of semiconductor devices made it possible to produce solid state devices, which are smaller, more efficient, reliable, durable, safer, and more economical than thermionic tubes. Beginning in the mid-1960s, thermionic tubes were being replaced by the transistor. However, the cathode ray tube, CRT, remained the basis for television monitors and oscilloscopes until the early 21st century. Thermionic tubes are still used in some applications, such as the magnetron used in microwave ovens, certain high-frequency amplifiers, and amplifiers that audio enthusiasts prefer for their warmer tube sound. Not all electronic circuit valves electron tubes are vacuum tubes. Gas-filled tubes are similar devices, but containing a gas, typically at low pressure, which exploit phenomena related to electric discharge in gases, usually without a heater. Classifications edit audio vacuum tubes in radio 1 classification of thermionic vacuum tubes is by the number of active electrodes. A device with two active elements is a diode, usually used for rectification. Devices with three elements are triodes used for amplification and switching. Additional electrodes create tetrodes, pentodes, and so forth, which have multiple additional functions made possible by the additional controllable electrodes. Tube amplifier other classifications are by frequency range, audio, radio, VHF, UHF, microwave by power rating, small signal, audio power, high power radio transmitting by cathode filament type, indirectly heated, directly heated, and warm-up time, including bright emitter or dull emitter by characteristic curves design, e.g., sharp versus remote cutoff in some pentodes by application, receiving tubes, transmitting tubes, amplifying or switching, rectification, mixing specialized parameters, long life, very low microphonic sensitivity and low noise audio amplification, rugged or military versions specialized functions, lighter radiation detectors, video imaging tubes tubes, used to display information, Nixie tubes, magic eye tubes, vacuum fluorescent displays, CRTs IV11. Vacuum fluorescent display tubes tubes have different functions, such as cathode ray tubes, which create a beam of electrons for display purposes, such as the television picture tube, in addition to more specialized functions, such as electron microscopy and electron beam lithography. X-ray tubes are also vacuum tubes. Phototubes and photomultipliers rely on electron flow through a vacuum, though in those cases, electron emission from the cathode depends on energy from photons, rather than thermionic emission. Since these sorts of vacuum tubes have functions other than electronic amplification and rectification, they are described elsewhere. Miniature tubes edit miniature tube, right, compared to the older octal style. 
not including pins, the larger tube, a 5U4GB, is 93mm high with a 35mm diameter base, while the smaller, a 9-pin 12AX7, is 45mm high, and 20.4mm in diameter. Subminiature CV4501 tube, SQ version of EF72, 35mm long X 10mm diameter, excluding leads early tubes used to metal, or glass envelope atop an insulating backlight base. In 1938 a technique was developed to use an all-glass CONSTRUCTION 27 with the pins fused in the glass base of the envelope. This was used in the design of a much smaller tube outline, known as the miniature tube, having 7 or 9 pins. Making tubes smaller reduced the voltage, where they could safely operate, and also reduced the power dissipation of the filament. Miniature tubes became predominant in consumer applications such as radio receivers and hi-fi amplifiers. However, the larger older styles continue to be used especially as higher power rectifiers, in higher power audio output stages, and as transmitting tubes. Sub-miniature tubes Aditrica 6DS4 Nuvistor Triode, C 20mm high by 11mm diameter sub-miniature tubes with a size roughly that of half a cigarette were used in one of the very earliest general-purpose digital computers, the Jankum B, produced by the Jacobs Instrument Company 28A in consumer applications as hearing aid amplifiers. These tubes did not have pins plugging into a socket, but were soldered in place. The Acorn tube, named due to its shape, was also very small as was the metal-cased RCA Nuvistor from 1959, about the size of a thimble. The Nuvistor was developed to compete with the early transistors, and operated at higher frequencies than those early transistors could. The small size supported especially high-frequency operation. Nuvistors were used in aircraft radio transceivers, UHF television tuners, and some hi-fi FM radio tuners, Sensui 500A, until replaced by high-frequency capable transistors. Gas filled tubes Aditka's fill tubes such as discharge tubes and cold cathode tubes are not hard vacuum tubes, though are always filled with gas at less than sea level atmospheric pressure. Types such as the voltage regulator tube and thyrotron resemble hard vacuum tubes and fit in sockets designed for vacuum tubes. Their distinctive orange, red, or purple glow during operation indicates the presence of gas. Electrons flowing in a vacuum do not produce light within that region. These types may still be referred to as electron tubes as they do perform electronic functions. High power rectifiers use mercury vapor to achieve a lower forward voltage drop than high vacuum tubes. Beam power tubes edit main article, beam TETRODE6L6 tubes in glass envelopes The beam power tube is usually a tetrode with the addition of beam forming electrodes, which take the place of the suppressor grid. These angled plates, not to be confused with the anode, Focus the electron stream onto certain spots on the anode which can withstand the heat generated by the impact of massive numbers of electrons, while also providing pentode behavior. The positioning of the elements in a beam power tube uses a design called critical distance geometry, which minimizes the tetrode kink, plate to control grid capacitance, screen grid current, and secondary emission from the anode, thus increasing power conversion efficiency. The control grid and screen grid are also wound with the same pitch, or number of wires per inch. The windings of the control and screen grid wires are aligned such that the screen grid is in the shadow of the control grid. The two grids are positioned so that the control grid creates sheets of electrons that pass between the screen grid wires. Aligning the grid wires also helps to reduce screen current, which represents wasted energy. This design helps to overcome some of the practical barriers to designing high power, high efficiency power tubes. EMI engineers Cabot Bull and Sidney Rada developed the design which became the 6L6, the first popular beam power tube, introduced by RCA in 1936, and later corresponding tubes in Europe the KT66, KT77 and KT88 made by the Marconi Osram Val subsidiary of GEC, the KT standing for kinkless tetrode. Pentode operation of beam powered tubes is often described in manufacturers' handbooks and data sheets, resulting in some confusion in terminology. While they are not strictly pentodes, their overall electrical behavior is similar. Variations of the 6L6 design are still widely used in tube guitar amplifiers, making it one of the longest lived electronic device families in history. 
Similar design strategies are used in the construction of large ceramic power tetrodes used in radio transmitters. Beam power tubes can be connected as triodes for improved audio tonal quality, but in triode mode deliver significantly reduced power output. Indirectly heated cathodes edit the desire to power electronic equipment using AC mains power, faced a difficulty with respect to the powering of the tube's filaments, as these were also the cathode of each tube. Powering the filaments directly from a power transformer introduced mains frequency, 50 or 60 Hz, hum into audio stages. The invention of the equipotential cathode reduced this problem, with the filaments being powered by a balanced AC power transformer winding having a grounded center tap dot a superior solution, and one which allowed each cathode to float at a different voltage, was that of the indirectly heated cathode. A cylinder of oxide-coated nickel acted as an electron-emitting cathode, and was electrically isolated from the filament inside it. Indirectly heated cathodes enable the cathode circuit to be separated from the heater circuit. The filament, no longer electrically connected to the tube's electrodes, became simply known as a heater, and could as well be powered by AC, without any introduction of HUM.29 in the 1930s, indirectly heated cathode tubes became widespread in equipment using AC power. Directly heated cathode tubes continued to be widely used in battery-powered equipment, as their filaments required considerably less power than the heaters required with indirectly heated cathodes. Tubes, designed for high-gain audio applications, may have twisted heater wires to cancel out stray electric fields, fields that could induce ejectionable hum into the program material. Heaters may be energized with either alternating current, AC, or direct current, DC. DC is often used where low hum is required.